In this lesson, we'll continue our review of PSAT Math Test 2, Section 4, Calculator Permitted Questions 19 through 21. So a little bit further in this section, these will be more difficult problems. Let's take a look at 19. An artist is creating a sculpture using bendable metal rods of equal length. One rod is formed into the shape of a square and another rod into the shape of an equilateral triangle. If each side of the triangle is two inches longer than each side of the square, how long in inches is each rod? So you first have to recognize that he's using these bendable rods. One rod is formed into a shape of a square, the other into the shape of an equilateral triangle. So the rods are equal, and that means the perimeter of this square equals this equilateral triangle. And they tell us that if each side of the triangle is two inches longer, we just have to figure out how long the rod is. So we can make a diagram to help illustrate it. So we have a square, and we're just going to call these sides. So there's four S's. And this equilateral triangle, it's two inches longer each side than the square, so we're going to call it S plus two. And we know that both of these equal each other. And so we could just make an equation. We have four S's, four S equals, and we could just do three times the quantity, S plus two. And we multiply this out, we get three S plus six, four S. And now we just solve. This, is, this will get the length of each side. And so we subtract three S and we get S equals six. You want to be careful though, S equals six. And we have to find the rod. Remember, one rod was used to make the square and the equilateral triangle. I would just use the square. They're both equal. And it, there's four of these sides, and so it's going to be 6 times 4, and the answer is 24. All right, let's take a look at question number 20. A rational function is defined above which of the following is an equivalent form that displays values not included in the domain as constants or coefficients. This is really just understanding what they're asking for. Not included in the domain, that would be undefined, right? There are, when the function is undefined. When is the function undefined? When the denominator equals zero. And to express the solutions as constant, what form is that? Well, that's just intercept form. We've had questions like this, I think, with parabolas, where it, it might ask, in which of the following are the x-intercepts of the parabola expressed as constants or coefficients? So that's intercept form as well. And so that's exactly the same question, just here it's it's just applying to a different equation and so here we know this we need the the solutions where x is zero for the denominator you don't even have to factor this just look at the choices the only one that has intercept form is here right and so we know at negative two and one those are the solutions that would make the function undefined and those would not be included in the domain. And so the answer here is B, it's just recognizing it. If you had a couple choices with the intercept form, then I suppose you'd have to factor it, but it's not necessary for this question. And let's take a look at question 21. A landscaper is designing a rectangular fountain with four foot wide path around it. The equation A equals 4P plus 64 will relate to the area A in square feet of the path of to the perimeter p in feet of the fountain. In the design, how many feet will the perimeter of the fountain increase for each additional square foot of the path's area? So we have a linear equation, a equals 4p plus 64. We know that a is the area, p is the perimeter. And this is a common question where they're giving us a linear equation set to a real life application. And we want to know how many feet will the perimeter of the fountain increase, so that's the x-coordinate, if the area increases by one, each additional foot, and that's the y. And if you watch these videos, I've talked about this, it's a common question, you never have to solve it. You have to know the relationship between x and y in slope-intercept form. And I'll just review it. Any equation, if it's in slope-intercept form, let's I'll just give you an example. If the x goes up by one, the y, will increase by the slope, which is two. If it, the x goes up by two, it'd be two times the slope, which is four. If it's negative, it, it'd move inversely, but it's the same concept. Whenever x goes up by one, y will go up by the slope if it's positive. If it's negative, it would go down. However, if the y now increases by one, the x is going to increase by the inverse of the slope. If you just remember this concept, you'll never have to solve these problems. And so here we have a linear equation, 
And the question's saying, how many feet will the perimeter increase, that's the x, for each additional foot of the area? So if the y goes up by one, we know that the x, which is the p, will increase by the inverse of the slope, and that is one fourth.